going to be Abzid versus Deli Sultanate. So no Boris will be slayed today. And we've got B spawning on the south side uh, as the Deli up in the north. Puppy Paul's Abzid. And let's see where those deer are, as you say. Yep, right towards the middle. We could perhaps see uh, some movement towards there with their second town center. Yeah, I think it might be... Uh, it's pretty far away. Might a, for might be a bit well. far, yeah. yeah. But, you know, still, he, he can definitely uh, defend that one sacred site. Um, because he doesn't need to contest the other two, right? You're you're basically just fighting over the middle sacred side on this map uh, against Delhi. You kind of just give up the uh, the enemy one, and obviously yours. You don't need to defend. I mean, it's right there. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how he goes about it. But I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be a standard like second TC to horsemen and some camel archers. Now, do you think both players are gonna open up with? two scouts here or is this going to be a one scout operation um i think two scouts for both no yeah i would imagine so we're we'll waiting we'll wait and see here and as far as with the sheep spawn on this map i haven't really studied it too much i don't know if it's kind of just like evenly distributed just about everywhere every once in a while you know there's sometimes a pocket on a certain map that you should look for have you have you done much sheep analysis here yet no i've literally entered this map once and uh that's about it i mean this both players have one scout. Yeah, that's what I, I was wondering. I saw that. So I was like, I, I guess they've both decided that, you know, we're going for the berries today. Uh, they're they're okay doing that. It was interesting to see both players just go for one. You know, some every time I cast uh, games, because, you know, I watch games when I'm, when I'm not playing and stuff like that. But every time I cast, I'm, like, more focused on, you know, the actual games and what people do. And every once in a while, I see something. And I'm like, am I playing this wrong? Am I, <laughs> yeah. am I supposed to go one scout? Am I supposed to go two scouts? Is this a mistake? And I started like questioning myself and doubting myself. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I guess because they're both, uh, you know, they, they don't, they get that extra food from berries. Maybe they don't feel like they need as much food, but I still think it's pretty important to get as many sheep as possible. Yeah. So it's uh, interesting that both players decide to go against it. So pulling that scout, I guess technically you should age up slightly faster, uh, correct? Uh, yeah, you do age up faster, but it all depends how many sheep you get with that bonus scout, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing is if both players, like let's say one of the players attacks the other one's gold, how is he going to defend it, right? Yeah. Because there's two scouts against one, so it kind of becomes... He's not going to necessarily lose anything, but he just becomes you know, a little bit uncomfortable. You have to micro, you have to struggle. And if you have one scout, you can't scout and defend at the same time. So um, I just find it interesting. But uh, yeah, the age up is a bit faster, and uh, that's maybe what they're looking for. Yeah, I wonder if, like, for Puppy Paul's perspective, maybe his goal is just to get that second town center as fast as he possibly can before, if he's going to go straight for it, uh, if B is looking to, to come harass. But... Uh, definitely going to be a Dome of Faith there on the south side for the Dilly Sultanate uh, with an economic wing for Puppy Paul going for that fresh food stuff, which gives you those half price villagers. It's a great deal you can't beat and is even better when you get multiple town centers. Yep, exactly. Exactly. All right. So the whole map is pretty much scouted. Uh, that one sheep has not been taken. It's about to be taken by the enemy. Yeah. Um, Curious to see what B is going to do. We saw B earlier with a second TC, which uh, was very interesting. So he might try to do the same thing here because, again, he cannot go for Sacred Side win. So yeah. he has to have like a long term plan here. Yep. So uh, we'll see really early on in the next age exactly what their game, pl game plan is going to be. But obviously, here we've got the Abbasid looking for that second town center, at least a second town center, right? Somebody said, do you go three TCs or just typically just two here? Um, I actually played a game against Poppy Paw in this matchup and I went triple TC and it was actually completely fine. And then I died to elephants. So maybe it wasn't <laughs> fine, but uh, I feel like it's actually possible to go triple TC because Delhi can't really kill you. You know, like they're not going to get siege engineering. So they can't really kill you. It's just a matter of, can you, you know, delay the stuff that you need to delay while having 3TC economy? Yeah, we see Puppy Paul right now scouting across the middle, probably looking to see if there's anything going out to build a wall or a tower or anything 
uh, middle on the sacred sites as that will become a point of contention here uh, very early and we do have a stable for br down he put a scholar inside there so efficient production he's going to be quickly getting out some scouts and looking to try to delay puppy paul's second town center but uh puppy paul's already just about has that resources he needs to drop that yep pretty good uh pretty good timing from him uh we'll see where he decides I mean, i'm assuming left side maybe like on that deer pack also next to the sacred side just in case mm -hmm. um oh because oh, he's gonna go right never mind yeah say a horseman there would be annoying but yeah on the right side it looks like a little more uh defensive position perhaps there but between the wood and other berries there so i guess that was his goal this horseman likely will not be able to pick anything up there uh before that and he can see it's being built right now uh, there with his scout yeah slowly he's gonna get up i don't think he'll he might get a head off with the horseman and then he's gonna just finish completely Taking on the some other shots. side can we uh can we check b's base just to see what he is uh oh there's no way he kills something no 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 yeah i to run away get some sun himself uh, b just oh he's yeah he's gonna go second dc and this is this is the map by the way this is not new delhi or something I think this is mostly map where, like I said, if you can't trigger the sacred side win, then what's the point of just fully committing, right? You, you're going to go into castle, so why not just enter castle with having more workers and having decent worker production? And uh, Puppy Boy needs to scout this because if he sees this, he might decide to go triple TC because this is a situation of they're both going to be on the equal number of TCs except... Uh, B will also have sacred side income, so he will be slightly ahead. Yep, and right now we have that second town center online for Puppy Paul. It doesn't look like he's gathering any more stones, so it's just going to be a two town center operation as he is likely going to macro for an age up, though I do see him uh, building some military buildings, so perhaps... I think his scout just saw those, so I think he knows he's got that second town center there. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if Puppy Paul was watching uh, when we casted oh when he did this so he might be very surprised like oh, what delhi's going for second tc like you know what's going on um but yeah now he knows where he's at so he's got the full info so puppy paw either goes for mass units and plays you know quote unquote normal or he decides to go for third tc that's gonna be completely completely up to him yep so uh we've got a barracks on the front line he also has an archer range and is that okay that's a house uh, going up, so uh, got a little bit of army there in the middle for B, killing the wolf, but uh, not a whole lot of action yet. Both players just kind of booming up, collecting their berries. Yep, yep, yep. And B going for just horsemen, actually, nothing else. So he's not going to be walling the middle. And I don't know where B goes from here because he's about to. Is he know, sanctity? He, he, yeah, he does. Why is he not taking that? He's forgotten he's playing in the deli. <laughs> he's, yeah, he built the second TC and is like, what? Well, I'm supposed to take those? But I think that um, if Poppy Paul decides to push out, he can just... Yeah, why is he not taking those? <laughs> I don't know. He, he thinks he's that playing is, the Avacid uh... or something. But uh, eventually he'll take it, so... Just taking his sweet time. Yeah, because... Yeah, I mean, that second research in, in field oh, is... Oh, like, third town center. Down. There we go. We, yeah. Just when you thought he was making two town centers, he saw the Delhi town center and said, wait, 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 wait. I got to make three town centers. Yeah, and I like that response. I mean, it's it's like a natural thing. It feels like to do with Abbasid. Like, whenever a Sid does two TCs, you do three. If they do three, you do four. And then their food spending on villagers is going to be so high that you can just, you know, kill them or... You're gonna, you know, deplete the food sources so fast that you can potentially get a kill on them or or just have more units. There we point. go. Starting to capture that sacred site, so he'll start trickling that gold on in. Is he going for the middle one yet? Are there any scholars out there? There's one, so he's gonna be going for that. Uh, and with a fully horseman army, he's really not gonna be able to engage if Puppy Paul moves out because I don't think he just wants to go up against a spearman unless he can dish out enough healing. But one scholar, probably not. Ooh, he went pro scouts. Oh, did he? Can we check the, uh, there's a deer on the left side. I think he's about, he's yoinking them right now. Ah, that's I like that. Too. 
I like that. Not, not a thing you see every day anymore. It used to be like every game was pro scouts <laughs> until, until they like slowed them down. Yeah, so obviously for Delhi, it's completely, completely free to do that. So it's one of those things, you know, why not? You know, you make three extra scouts from your stables. It doesn't cost you any villager time. And Poppy Paul will definitely not expect this, by the way. So the funny thing is he does not have a TC on the deer pack next to his base. So there's a chance that uh -huh. he runs in and yoinks his deer as well in the end. Yep, I hope we see it. Do you, do you remember we used to have, like, d scouts would dive under town centers to steal... Oh, I remember. <laughs> ...steal <her> his <laughs> deer. I, I, I always loved that move. You would... It was, like, French versus Rus, and both players would continuously make scouts, and then French would make a knight, run it under TC for the fire, Yeah. and then you would run in, like, 10 scouts underneath TC, and you would just spam click to steal as many deer packs as you can. And the other player would try to like block you with his own scouts from stealing it. And then he would do that to you after. Now, have you played around with it yet? Didn't they change it so now you can actually like queue up, shift click your, your professional scouts now with the carcass? I, I thought that was a change they made in this recent Yeah, I, I, I haven't gotten professional scouts in like weeks or months, but <laughs> yeah, apparently you can queue up dropping off carcass before you get it now. So it's a lot easier to use. Yeah, so fun to see two TC professional scouts. Delhi, not your uh, everyday Delhi play. Horsemen running in, trying to kick those villagers since that town center can only support 10 garrison uh, population, but the military going to box them out. Looks like he's got a nice little mass of uh, spearmen. We've got the camel archers, and uh, he <laughs> kills one, I guess. Yeah, and he's, I mean, again, B doing the B thing, right? He loves raiding. <clears throat> he's producing a lot of units, by the way. Holy, he's got 21 archers and 14 horsemen. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's just super, super massing units with this economy. And he's taking all the, the deer, right? So when when the food collecting goes down, right, Papi Paul will run out of food way quicker. And then we're going to be in a situation that we had earlier in the day where... Uh, Puppy Boy's going to need to transition to farms, and if B just keeps massing units, he's going to have a timing where he can potentially exploit. And meanwhile, it's been no contest for that those two sacred sites, or at least that middle one. So uh, you can see B's gold climbing up right now. Yeah, Puppy Boy, is, I feel like he has just chosen. I'm not going to actually fight. Yeah. Uh, I think he, he, he kind of said to himself, like, okay, he can take the two sites. I'll just go 3TC and we'll go this into the uh, late game. And you see Puppy Paul walling off early, kind of narrowing down the path he can get attacked from and looking for that uh, straight up engagement. Yep, so uh, we do see B's army starting to poke forward to the front like he's maybe looking to do a push. I'll, I keep looking to see if there's any... C Siege Engineering is actually, I think, completed research or in queue? I think it's in queue is what's currently going on for B. So his Siege Engineering uh, likely going to be... Looking to build some rams here soon. Yeah, and uh, he has way more army, by the way. Like, 69 against uh, 41 is quite a bit more. He is behind in villagers, but again, he does have the, the gold income from the sacred side, so it kind of works out. Now, he doesn't have a whole lot of scholars up there for healing. Actually, one scholar on the north side of the army getting picked off as, as we speak. Yeah, and he's getting chased down. Uh, I mean, there's no counter for... Poppy Paws uh, Horsemen right now. Kind of Horsemen do okay against Horsemen and they beat out Archers. B is doing a good job kiting and just picking oh, up Spearmen, but I just feel like he has so many more units. Yeah, big surround going on right now. Of course, we've got those Camel Archers uh, with their Camel Unease debuffing B's Horsemen. And uh, B continues to kite back with his Archers, trying to pick off as many Spearmen as he can. Yeah, and once he picks up the spearmen, I mean, look how many horsemen he yep. has left, right? He can just chase down the camels and chase down everything else. So a really, really good fight for B. And, uh, you know, he already had the lead in the army, and now he just kind of extends that lead. And once again, by the way, 11 scholars. B. Where are they? Where are the scholars? <laughs> I guess he just get he, his research. There's no way he has, like... I mean, even if he has three in mosque and two in fighting or production buildings, there's still 
<laughs> I don't know. There's one right there. Puppy Ball currently aging up right now. You can only assume it's going to be with the Culture Wing. And B is also dropping an age. Can we look at what landmark maybe uh, he is dropping down there? And I wonder if it'll be the uh, House of Learning or if it'll be the Compound or the Defender. And that's going to be the House of Learning. Yeah, so once again, very interesting that uh, all the Delhi games we've seen today was House of Learning. Yeah, no Compound Defender. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So we can expect more Lancers then. Yep. And uh, B moving forward with a, a pretty nice Archer Mass. He's just using his Horseman basically to uh, block for him. No Spearman on his side. Uh, as both players hit age three, we see actually Puppy Paul hit it right. I think that's Puppy Paul hit it right now. Uh, no, it's B because of course uh, Delhi could start later and still age up faster because uh, you're kind of stuck with the age time uh, for Abyssid. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, how many farms does he have in total i wonder he seems i mean it's 2k food income uh those yeah. puppy posts it seems like he has pretty decent food income uh going for himself he's adding more production and funny thing is they both are like mass unit sieve until this point and this is where puppy pop will continue to just mass mass units and b is going to transition into more kind of tech heavy army with lancers and elephants and stuff like that so it's going to be pretty interesting to see who's going to come out on top in that one. I feel like we haven't seen the, the infamous B raids going on this game yet. He's been kind of playing uh, his side of the map, keeping his army together, not as as uh, spread out as he usually is. It's the power of walls. I mean, he did a couple of quick and easy walls and he has... Oh, that's... Oh, that was oh, close. Oh, oh. That was an almost. Yeah, that was very, very close. Picks it off, but he still has three relics, you know, three relics on the way home. He did deny two, but, you know, Abbasid doesn't really go for relics, so, because their age up is always later, so I feel like even though he, oh, he denied three, actually. So even though he denied these relics, I think it's just a matter of time till B, you know, actually gets them and, and takes them home. Yep, and do you think he's going to go into a, a uh, tower elephant spam? I think you go... Probably, I mean, he's going House of Learning, right? So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. expecting some uh, Lancers and then just Tower Elephants as well. I think look look at like the uh, scouts going in trying to block. They didn't do a whole lot. Yeah. But they're and, helping uh, now. This is a bit of a different game though, right? Because this is normally Abbasid is going to have better and better eco, right? As the game goes. But this is not a, a your usual game because Delhi has had 2 TC for a long time as well right so delhi is not entering this in like kind of like bad economy or, or or whatever he still has really good eco he's getting the relics and like we said he can go imperial and they can also survive with a little less oh man big raid going in here right now uh puppy ball losing maybe all these villagers uh, he might be looking away right now that was was pretty massive on the same side we've got b losing villagers both uh <laughs> not taking good care of their citizens that was a cleanup there it looks like Puppyball didn't see it at all yeah both players you know they're you can see the their pings going off everywhere they're both raiding yeah they had like two spots on uh, both sides and moving the armies in the middle so a pretty expensive loss even though you saw puppy Paul lose over 10 villagers there yeah he's still 20 plus workers ahead so that's obviously really really good is that a war elephant not a common sighting but uh there you go we, we mentioned this the other game that you'd like to see that against uh, so many horsemen and i hear a bolo yeah, going off somewhere i think it's on the left side <laughs> it's just raiding yeah I, there's just horsemen everywhere i spoke too soon i was like oh there's not a whole lot of raiding and now there's like six pings going off on the map well, when those are lancers so those won't be dying to a tc they you know he actually needs units there to defend and Mm, I feel like B is doing a decent job uh, raiding everywhere, and we see that's uh, that's Puppy Paw keep. So mm -hmm. a little bit of a twist, you know. Uh, Delhi has been yeah. dropping keeps for so long, and now Abbasid grabs the stone and is going to return to favor for all those times. Yep. So we've got on the front line, he has capped that middle sacred site or decapped it rather, so B doesn't have that gold income. While there's still lots of raiding going on, Lancer's doing raids. So these are. A little more powerful raids than the horsemen that are typically running around. And he's bringing... How many villagers does he have there coming to build this keep? 12? Running across the map. I mean, Puppy Paw just took so much damage from him. Yep, Manganel taking a shot, though. Uh, his army's there, ready to fight. 
Maybe they can pick off the villagers in time. That's a lot of horsemen. He's going to pick off that mangonel most likely. Ooh, it's going to die like instantly. But not before getting one more volley off. And now, uh-oh, War Elephant engaging Spears. That's not a great matchup as they're better for countering the Cavalry and the uh, Tower Elephants running around trying to get some shots. But right now, this is looking pretty good for Puppy Ball. Yeah, and this is what, what happened in one of our previous series, right? The, the decision to go for the villagers and to fight at the same time. And you saw, like, yes, he killed the villagers, but he lost so many units where even though his economy is better than Puppy Ball's due to all the gold, he actually might just straight up lose the game to just sheer amount of units. And, you know, Puppy Boy is just going to send more villagers there and reinforce that uh, keep. Yeah. Now, uh, he also lost, like, those mangonels and elephants so quickly. That's a very expensive loss uh, compared to this is a lot of horsemen and spearmen for the most part for Puppy Ball. And like you mentioned, yeah, he'll just repop those villagers, repop this army. We do see a mangonel just rolling out by itself right now. That's going to be an easy pick. That's some units just need to. You need to turn around and actually get it. Yeah, that's a rallied uh, mango. It is not paying attention. And, you know, in these kinds of uh, situations, like, elephants can be really good. A good value, Especially eh? if they're healed. Yeah, look at that one elephant getting healed by five scholars. Yeah. Just chilling, enjoying. Surprised that Manganel stayed alive. The horse been trying to get it, but the villagers healing. <laughs> it's right. And he did kill the villagers, though, on that keep. But here come the reinforcements. Oh, that's 14 spearmen just chilling there, AFK. You used to get those spearmen on the elephant. That elephant is going to pop like a balloon when they get there. <laughs> Maybe and a that's so coming many... in. Double Wolo. So that's going to force Puppy Ball to move out. Triple? Triple it. No, just. <laughs> oh, he actually there gets go. the. There's uh, the triple. Horse. Oh, you got some horsemen. Okay, okay. And Puppy was on, uh, not necessarily on a timer, but, you know, the elephant count is growing. Yes. And his economy did take massive damage. So he kind of needs to do something here. Yeah, so B's got several elephants running around. He's got another Wolo. He's basically just boxing out those spears. Oh, oh, he garrisoned that's <laughs> The elephant, did it go inside the town center? Yeah, I, I think, I think it's it still just died, vanished before our eyes. It did die. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't quite fit in the TC and just uh, exploded. Now, can you still uh, yeah. fit 20 elephants in there? Yeah, of course. There's room of right course. <laughs> oh, another TC right next to this one. And this is what I was talking about, right? Look at the mangonels. He had no workshops. He had nothing, and then suddenly, oh, two mangonels. And that's the, you know, that's the good part about Abbasid. Just having that option and being able to do that. And, uh, oh, that's a lot of idle villagers. Mm -hmm. Does B not have any farms, by the way? Is that the only farms he has, or those front ones? Uh, he's got 14, 1,500 food per minute right now. I, I'm not seeing a whole lot of farms, let's say, over on the east side of the map. Yeah, maybe, yeah, he does have some farms over there. Okay, so he's running off of eight farms right now. Because I think the rest were under TC on the deer. So this uh -oh, is... Uh-oh, mangonels and lots of villagers. The villagers might get it. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, he survived, Oof. though, and the villagers killed two mangonels. So not a terrible trade, despite the fact that all these villagers are idle. Yeah, I mean, he has like 50, 40, 50 villagers right here, guys. He's just... Yeah. They're just idle, and they're not doing much. So even though he's technically defending, right? If this continues, then his economy is just idle. Look at the villagers fighting. There's a villagers fighting down in there. Yeah, another <laughs> elephant goes down. And he, I mean, he's running out of gold. Like you can see, 550 a minute. He's got negative six wood. Yet. He owes the banker. As you do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of villagers on the wood line. And he has two keeps, by the way, mm -hmm. just yeah, deal shooting with that. at him. Yep. Yeah, and that's something that actually he needs to remake Siege Workshop somewhere else because the Siege Workshop right uh -oh. now is on top of the keep. Oh, there it is. Maybe going to deny that sacred site. And, uh, you know, this TC, if it gets rallied anywhere on the left side, it's just going to keep bleeding villagers. And it's one of those things that you might not notice. So he, he might be rallying workers to the west side and just running through that keep the whole time. Yep. And we see more siege being built on the front line. He's going to lose those relics. So his gold income is going to be really shut down here, losing likely the sacred site in a second, and then also losing that relic income. Yep. So not only, yeah, not only loses the sacred site, but loses the relics too. Um... He's still holding for now. Like, he has 29 armor supply, but that is elephants, right? So that's, like, 400 supply. And uh, he still he still has a chance. 
he just needs to stabilize, but the thing is, this is power of Abbasid, you know, like, they have, value-wise, they don't have good units, right, but they can spam so many units, it, it's just crazy amounts, and this kind of pressure from Papipo is not stopping, you know, he's not about to run out of something and then there's no units, this is continuous uh, push that is happening, and the only way to beat it is get a, kind of like a straight-up fight and win, but it's gonna be very hard to win against this. See those landmarks being sniped down now. I feel like it's just a, it's a matter of time before B is going to have yeah. to tap out. This is kind of how I felt like that last Delhi game we saw on here went. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that, that's the power of Abbasid. Like, if you look at the minimap, there's just units streaming downwards. And even if he trades these six horsemen for two villagers, that's worth, right? Because he has another two on the way. He's not losing anything. Uh... Even if he starts right-clicking these houses, he's winning. You know, he doesn't need to actually kill units. Uh, he set up his economy in a really good way, and he's just kind of profiting from it uh, right now. He's actually just going to click the landmarks. I mean, that can work, too. Yep, so landmarks kind of dying. Mostly, I think that's like all spearmen. He's got 59 spearmen on the map right now. He's going to take out those landmarks, taking out another mosque. Oh, and he found the food. Can he get in? Yep, he can. Oh, ran right oh, by oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. He's like, no, I'm not interested. Oh, oh he's searching for gold. That's mm -hmm. why. Bobby Paul has a cool 3.5k gold in the bank right now. He's trying to do a wall, though, but his, the scholars just instantly die. And uh, what landmark is left? I guess the Dome of Faith, I think, will be the last one. Yeah, that's it. The TC is on fire. Um... I mean, yeah, he, he's losing so many, like, production buildings. He has no gold income soon. He's mining on the left again. But it's just a matter of time till Papi is like, oh, yeah, gold is there. And he sends a couple of horsemen, delays that. Uh, I think horsemen are working on the east on the wall to break into those farms as well. And, you know, he's trading worse, right, uh, unit for unit. But, like I said, it doesn't matter. His economy is completely uninterrupted. And he's just overpowering with uh, just numbers in this game. Mm -hmm. And B does have some men at arms there on the front line now, which deal with the spearmen a lot better. You see those mangoes moving up, though, trying to get a shot on those archers. He's got to watch out for that. Setting up, and they take their volley. Archers wiped out. Oof. That was a, that was a good shot. Yep, he grabs and his re relics. He keeps coming backwards <laughs> with his relics. Eventually, he's just going to... What is... I got another mosque. It's like, he just needs to target that final landmark. The thing is, he's, like, running into the hills, but... The last landmark is right there. Like, Poppy can actually just made, make 10 rams and just click on the... He's retreating the into the corner. <laughs> yeah. It's retreat, he's retreating, but uh, there's nowhere to run. Yep. At this point, like, what do you do? Is it just, like, trebuchet time? Take out that final landmark and call it a day? Yeah. I, I mean, I think even just, like, right-clicking on it might work, to be honest. But you can make rams. You can make some trebs. It's up to you, but... Uh, it's looking pretty rough for me. Yep, uh, I keep wondering if Paul will just buy next age, but uh, he's just trying to finish this off. Uh, don't blame him. And uh, I think he's very close to doing so. More horsemen flooding across the map. It seems to be the trash army composition for him with the sprinkling of siege units. Little uh, tempted. Nope. We got some sprinkles for the mangonels, but. Funny thing is, mangonels aren't even that great in this situation because there's just like yeah. three elephants and like two scholars and three men at arms. Uh, so he picks up the mangonels, but it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, they weren't doing a whole lot. We see those elephants kind of trapped there with the spearmen. I think there's man arms in there too. Will he go for a wool? I don't know if the, he has to reset time on that, I think. He does have time. What is he going to get? Like two spearmen? Can <laughs> he get something? He got a little something. Couldn't tell right. how much down there. That's that's a comeback right there. Come back. <laughs> yeah, that one spearman and the one horseman he got are about to uh, give away all the opposite spears. Town center is still alive. He's really good at keeping the main TC alive. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And uh, right now, a lot, the... a lot of idle villagers. Yeah, those villagers have nowhere to go. That's the funny part. Yeah, we see this. He's trying to find work for them, but there's just nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Springle is just being instantly popped right now. He's pulled out a relic. You can see they're going to try to convert, but this trick's only going to work so many times. 
There we go. Let's see if he gets it. There's a number of horsemen there, but they are up on top of that scholar, and it goes oh. down. And there you have it. B taps out with Puppy Paul, taking the first game of the series. This is the finals 1-0 in this best of five with the Absid Dynasty. I, I don't think we've seen... Have we seen Delhi win yet today? Um... I'm not sure. I think a lot of them, at least in these last few series, uh, Delhi has been uh, defeated. But as far as that game is uh, concerned, is there any moments that kind of stood out to you of uh, where that really just started to go in Puppy Paul's favor? I mean, that keep drop was was pretty big. Well, initially, it I would say it went pretty well for B. Um, you know, he he killed when they do when they did their raids, right? Uh, B lost way less. Like it was like 130 yeah. workers to like 90, and then it was equalized at one point and the lancers kept just uh you know trading and killing stuff 